ES Audio. What's up? I'm John Weeks, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, the country that has banned Chat GPT. But first, consumer champion Martin Lewis is claiming to be a victim of confusion caused by the new blue tick system on Twitter. The money-saving experts tweeted to say a fake account promoting cryptocurrency has been created under his name, which has the authenticity mark now available to anyone who pays for it. He's called for the doppelganger account to be removed, but it was still available at the time this show published. On the 1st of April, the site was set to roll out changes promised by Elon Musk to remove blue ticks from accounts that didn't sign up to the monthly Twitter blue subscription. However, it appears many of those with original blue ticks still have them, and there's no distinction between legacy blue tick holders and those who paid for them. The founder of Wikipedia has told the Evening Standards there's still a way to go before artificial intelligence can play a role in writing its articles. He doesn't think it's reached a stage of evolution where Wikipedia are going to start commissioning AI bots to write entire articles from scratch. He thinks there's still quite a high risk that bots could publish information that is inaccurate or misleading. That's our tech reporter, Simon Hunt, who spoke with Jimmy Wales about everything AI. Simon told us Jimmy's main concern was around so-called hallucinations, which is when AI comes up with a fact that sounds plausible, but is actually made up or simply inaccurate. He asked ChatGPT, did a plane crash into the Empire State Building? And ChatGPT said no. And it then went on to describe how a famous event in the history of the Empire State Building was when a B-52 bomber crashed into the building. But Simon told us Jimmy does think there could be a use case for the tech now when it comes to checking for inconsistencies, for example, between articles in different languages on Wikipedia. Now, it's a lot of work for a volunteer to try and figure out if there are any inconsistencies between those articles. But where AI could help is it could fairly instantaneously identify all of these inconsistencies and then flag them to volunteers so that they can make quick decisions about whether anything needs to be corrected or edited. Staying with AI, Italy's Deputy Prime Minister has criticised the country's banning of chat GPT. Matteo Salvini says the move by the privacy watchdog in Rome is disproportionate. Italy's Data Protection Agency ordered an immediate ban over what it calls the tech's unlawful collection of personal data. The watchdog also claims the AI tool lacked systems for verifying the age of minors. Alongside the ban, the watchdogs opened an investigation into OpenAI, the US-based research lab that created ChatGPT. A team of researchers in the UK are working on a testosterone patch for women with menopausal symptoms. The University of Warwick's Professor David Haddleton, who set up Medherent, The company behind it said the patch has huge potential to improve women's lives as it helps them with their loss of sex drive. If it gets regulatory approval, it would be the only testosterone replacement patch available globally and would be introduced first in the UK. It's hoped clinical trials can start later this year. Now, water companies in England could face unlimited fines for dumping sewage under changes being considered by the government. Ministers want to lift the cap from £250,000 for those who release sewage into rivers and the sea. In the last year, there was an average of 825 sewage spills per day into England's waterways, according to official figures. The government's proposal would mean money from all fines would go into a water restoration fund to restore wetlands, create new habitats and better manage rivers. Coming up, scientists reveal the deepest fish ever recorded. Why not hit follow and give us a rating during the break? Welcome back. It's hoped a new online project by Oxford University, designed as a new way to reduce anxiety and depression in young people, could change the way art and culture is used to boost mental health. A team of around 1,500 young people are creating an online art and culture museum as part of a trial called Origin. Dr. Rebecca Sherif, a senior clinical researcher at the uni who's leading the programme, said most of the support currently offered by health services, like medication and talking therapies, are inaccessible and unacceptable to many of the young people who need it most. 
She said this project gives them a chance to create their own intervention that young people are engaged by and believe in. Now, Ofcom is cracking down on internet service providers after a system designed to make switching providers simpler hasn't been introduced in time. One touch switch was designed by the watchdog to make it easier for households to change to a cheaper or faster broadband service. Once in place, customers would only need to contact a new broadband provider to switch, but not their current provider. It would also make switching quicker in as little as a day where possible. But Ofcom says it's launched an industry-wide enforcement program and accused providers of letting their customers down. And finally, more than 27,000 feet below the surface of the Western Pacific Ocean, scientists have captured pictures of the world's deepest fish. The juvenile fish, a type of snailfish, was filmed swimming at the extreme depths south of Japan. They're described as having a similar shape to a tadpole with bigger heads and slender bodies and can withstand the huge deep sea pressure thanks to their gelatinous bodies. Scientists leading the research believe their discovery could be at or close to the maximum depth any fish can survive. You're up to date. Come back at four o'clock for the Leader Podcast. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. See you then.